Hey guys, so as I was preparing for this today, um, I put a lot of thought into how I could help ELLs like Iris from class um, to better understand her lessons. Um, in this case, it would be a science lesson um, talking about weather predictions and tools that are used for those weather predictions. So as I went through the lesson, it talked about air temperature, wind direction, precipitation, and air pressure with specific tools that a scientist can use to measure those things. So I just kind of thought about um, if I had an ELL student and I was trying to help them understand a lesson like this um, for a science class, I would probably do a couple of things and I have a lot of ideas, but the main two tasks I decided to focus on um, and the reason why I decided to focus on these things is that I think they could most help the ELL student um, to kind of understand and be included in the lesson um, while not taking them out of their comfort zone necessarily. So the first idea I had is that um, since this lesson is like all about measuring weather that we take all the students in the class outside and pair them up into partnerships. Now the ELL students would be put with um, a student in the class that's really responsible that kind of knows the ELL um, and can really help sort of scaffold their learning in a way um, to make them, um, or help them understand the lesson a little bit better and answer their questions. Um, so for that one, um, the, let's see, I referred to Vygotsky, specifically the sociocultural theory by Vygotsky, because I feel like the student will kind of be gaining, um, like American cultural norms from the student that they that the ELL is working with and so they'll be getting that sociocultural theory from the, the student who's helping them um, and that was kind of the theory that I noticed for that specific task that I chose. A second task that I chose after looking through a really long list of everything that I had thought of for adaptions is that I as a teacher could make cards for each of my ELL students before the lesson and give it to them before the lesson so they have it throughout the um, the science lesson to kind of refer to um, and on each of the cards I could put definitions of really like big or confusing words that I would probably know as a teacher that they didn't understand and I would put the word and the definition in both English and their native language so they can see what the word is in both of them and then as they hear it throughout the lesson they'll be able to refer back and see the definition and go oh okay like that's what a barometer is and like that's what it does um, so that hopefully they won't be totally lost in the lesson because it kind of does have some big words, especially like, or like ideas that are kind of abstract, like stuff like air pressure. It's probably a little hard for them to understand, but if they had a definition and could refer to that <clears throat> while I was teaching, um, I think it would really be helpful for them to be able to have that tool. Um, I also used one of Vygotsky's ideas, which is the zone of proximal development for this um, specific um, kind of idea that I had about you giving the definitions for the words because um, I'm kind, I would kind of be scaffolding the students and giving them a card like that. I wouldn't be giving them all the information they needed, but I would be giving them enough to where they could be successful in the lesson, which I think is really important. Um, so that kind of like scaffolds their learning a little bit, which is totally what the zone of proximal development is about. Um, so that, those are, I used Vygotsky for both, but I really like Vygotsky's ideas and I think it relates really well to the two tasks that I, or not tasks, but like ideas that I came up with for um, um, kind of changing it to be developmentally appropriate for my ELLs. Um, and then from my reflection, I just thought that maybe some challenges the student might have with these ideas are really if they just don't like take hold of them and use them to their ability. Because um, if they don't refer to the card, they probably will get kind of lost in the lesson, especially if they don't know the vocabulary. Same thing with um, the student I pair them with. If they don't kind of utilize the student and ask questions and be like an active helper in the learning, um, they probably won't understand the lesson as much. And so I think it's really important that we emphasize 
that they use the tasks that they're given um, so that they can be helped. And it's done in a way that the students shouldn't feel uncomfortable, like using their card or asking one other student for help, um, which I really like as well. So that's why I decided to do those two specific um, adaptions um, for a student like Iris. So yeah, thank you guys.